You should know, Conference, that your union is renowned, not just in North America, but in Britain and around the world, as a union that stands up and fights back. Yeah, you, uh, you should be proud of that. And you couldn't have a better leader than my friend Leo Girard. He represents and encapsulates the very essence of what fighting back trade unionism means. You sh you've just seen him on the video addressing in London the largest demonstration that the British trade union movement has ever organized, nearly three quarters of a million people. And I can tell you, I can tell you, conference, that you'd have been proud of him. He got a fantastic reception for a great speech. You know, when I first met Leo and Ken Newman and Jerry Fernandez, I knew that they were my kind of people. And I knew that the USW was my kind of union. So I'm delighted. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to reaffirm the continued commitment of internationalism and to the united struggle of working people against global capital. That commitment is as firm today as ever. And workers uniting is its expression. Indeed, if ever there was a need for a global trade union, it is now. If ever there was a time to make workers uniting real and effective, to extend its work to new countries, and to deepen the cooperation with other unions, it is now. For workers across the world and our trade unions are facing challenges on a historic scale, beyond even what we could have imagined when our global union was first created three years ago. The biggest economic crisis since the 1930s, a banking crisis which has now become a sovereign debt crisis in one country after another. A slump which has left millions out of work, millions facing cuts in their pay and their retirement benefits, and millions homeless or fearing for their homes. Communities ransacked and wrecked by big business. A big business, comrades, which is utterly unrepentant which only wants to get back as fast as possible to the good old days of casino capitalism and the obscene bonuses for the fat cats. And which, of course, is backed by right-wing politicians who have spent most of their career in the service of high finance and corporate greed. And you know, sisters and brothers, we need to be honest with ourselves. A big business which is indulged by too many politicians of the centre-left who seem terrified of treading on the toes of the vested interests which have brought the world to this current chaos. Following events in Washington recently, the words of one of your greatest writers, Walt Whitman, came to mind. He said, the genius of the United States is not in its executives or politicians, nor in its ambassadors or authors, but always best in the common people. Never has it looked less appropriate to put the word genius in the same sentence as executives and politicians. Indeed, I can't improve on the description of a Republican politician, a Republican politician, who last week summed up the record of the political elite with these words. The political system, Republican or Democrat, over the last decade has delivered two failed wars, an economic meltdown, 20% of homes underwater, and stagnant wages. And now it has, for the first time ever, compromised your nations. And why? Not because your two great countries are bankrupt or have run out of money, but because the political system insists on pandering to the rich, 
insists on protecting their private jets and protecting the tax breaks of the big oil companies. Instead, they should be insisting on taxation of the rich to clear up the mess that they made. Let me just go back to Walt Whitman. He's right when he says that the genius of a nation, as it always has done, lies with its common people. I have full faith in the working people of the United States and Canada gathered in this hall today and across your countries. The steel workers, the paper workers, the healthcare workers, education workers, workers in oil, in aviation, women of steel, in every mine and mill, as the song goes. Your values, your integrity stands unimpeached. It is the ruling elite which is bankrupt. Wall Street to Washington, Bay Street to Ottawa, an elite which has forfeited the right to rule with its greed, its incompetence, and its indifference to the needs of the problems of the people that they have been elected to serve. But of course, colleagues, you know all of this because you live it every day. What you also need to know is that it's exactly the same where I come from. In Britain, we are blighted by the financial interests of the city of London, Wall Street's partners in global economic crime. And we have a conservative-led government with only one agenda, putting neoliberalism back on its feet, whatever the cost to ordinary people. You may have seen on TV recently the riots on the streets of London and most of our major cities. This is symptomatic of a much deeper malaise in our society. We live in a broken Britain where the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And that's a toxic recipe. And what's the response of the right wing? Well, they urge yet more tax cuts for the rich. So brothers and sisters, that's why it falls to us to offer a better way, an alternative as to how the economy should be run, a different order of values for our society, brilliantly spent out, spelt out by Leo yesterday and Nancy Pelosi. As new waves of crisis threaten to break over the world economy, in Greece and Ireland, in Italy and Spain, bearing down hardest on those least able to protect themselves. And we know from history that the danger that lurks when fear and anger are hijacked by the right, when politics plays on racism to divide and rule. And that means learning from the lessons of history. You can't cut your way out of a recession. That only makes it worse. Our alternative says, put people first. Put people before profit. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, we need to tackle unemployment, act to create jobs, help people stay in their homes, keep workers paying taxes, not drawing welfare, investing in manufacturing, growing our economy. Isn't that exactly what your great president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, did last time to deal with the depression? Workers uniting is a down payment on that future. A global workers organization that doesn't just talk about an alternative, but that works to create it in action. We've already done more than show our potential. Workers Uniting has organized solidarity with the epic Valley Strike in Canada. And we are proud of your victory there and to have done our bit to help. Just as we are grateful for your tremendous support in our long strike at British Airways, which we brought to a successful conclusion. We have united 
politically against the far right, keeping the race haters out of the Western Hotel. We have worked in support of each other's political campaigns, and we have brought our members together in metals, in the forestry sector, in the can and container industry, in education in all oil, and most of all, in the pulp and paper industry. In businesses where we have both Unite and USW members, like Alcoa, Pilkington, and National Grid, we have met together to start working out joint strategies. Women workers in both parts of our union have started to forge common links, and we fought alongside our brothers and sisters in Mexico and Colombia as well. We represent hope in an age of fear and progress in a world shackled by right-wing dogma. That's what binds us together. Sisters and brothers, I'm Len McCluskey. I was a dock worker from Liverpool, and I've got more in common with a steel worker from Pittsburgh than I have with any British boss. <laughs> Comrades, sisters and brothers, I've got more in common. I've got more in common with a forestry worker in British Columbia, an oil worker in Texas, a health worker in California, a paper worker from Wisconsin than I have with any British boss. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, that's what binds us together. Our politicians and media barons try to debilitate us. They try to grind us down by constantly telling us that there is no alternative and there's nothing we can do about it. And unfortunately, there are those in our movement who have accepted this, some. Well, I reject that defeatism. The history of our movement, indeed the history of the world, tells us that when ordinary working people join hands across nations and oceans, anything, anything is possible. The ideals that you represent of decency, fairness and equality are what stands us apart from the corporate elite and the boss's class. They don't understand these values. They don't realize that the spirit of solidarity and community courses through our very veins. And that's why, despite their wealth, despite their power, they will never, never defeat us. So sisters and brothers, I say to all of you here today, Believe, believe in your values, believe in your strength, believe in your union, for there is another world to win. I salute you co colleagues, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>